Today we're going to check out the Odyssey Penrose X where hi-fi audio finally meets gaming headsets. And we're going to compare it to the Astro Gaming A50s and we're going to check out the good. Oh, these sound so good. The bad. What? This won't even connect with the Series X. And the ugly. LZ's a little hot. We're going to have to take her down over there. So let's talk about it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, before I begin, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to B&H Photo for sending over the Astro Gaming A50s for me to check out. These are the brand new like generation four versions of the A50s. So if you're looking to get those, make sure to check out the link to B&H down in the description. And of course, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and helping me make cool videos like this one. Check out the link in the description below if you would like to become a patron as well. Quick backstory, I was gaming one night and streaming at the same time and one of my viewers was like, hey, check out the Penrose X. And I was just like, what's that? And I looked it up and I was like, ooh, a planar magnetic gaming headset? That sounds pretty cool. So I ended up purchasing them for $250, which was the pre-launch price. And I got them pretty much when they launched. And it's actually kind of hard to find them right now. I know they're sold out at a bunch of places, but I'll put links down in the description for B&H and all those other places. And I'll keep it updated on where you can buy them and where they do have stock for the Odyssey Penrose X. And they do retail for $300. So I figured, hey, I might as well compare them to the Astro A50s, which are also $300 and a set of headphones that I was actually wanting to get for quite some time. So this is going to be a good one. So first of all, let's talk about sound quality. Now you guys know I have a bunch of headphones. I'm a DJ, music producer, musician, all that kind of stuff. So I have a lot of headphones from in-ear monitors to AirPods to a multitude of wired uh, headphones costing anywhere from $300 to $1,600. So yeah, I know my headphones and I was actually very surprised with the Odyssey Penrose X because finally high quality audio comes to gaming headsets. Now, both headphones seem to do just fine. The A50s uh, were great at, you know, localizing my enemies. So were the Penrose X. But here's where the Penrose X really takes a leap beyond what a dynamic driver can do. The Odyssey Penrose X has a 100 millimeter planar magnetic driver. And if you don't know what those are or how they differ from standard dynamic drivers or, you know, cone shaped drivers, I will put links down in description to a few articles so you guys get an idea exactly what that is. Uh, the main benefit, I believe, from planar magnetic is the low distortion. OK, so this is kind of where it separates itself from a standard dynamic driver. Now, when playing the games, they were pretty much on par. I'd say, you know, crystal clear highs and mids on both. And bass was ample and enough, you know, when I was playing the game. Now, here's where they separate themselves. The Penrose X totally blew the A50s out of the water in aspects of bass, especially cluttered bass. What does this mean? Pretty much, I like to play music when I am playing video games. So I'm listening to something as I'm playing the game. I'll go into the settings of the game and turn the music all the way down. I'll keep the sound effects maybe at 70 to 75% volume, but all the music is down. And then I'm playing either Spotify on the Xbox because you can play like music and play the game at the same time. Pretty awesome. And I'm mostly listening to house music, melodic house, tech house, all that kind of stuff, which pretty much means there's, you know, a four to the floor kick drum that's always coming through. Now in multiplayer, I noticed a few times when someone would call in a napalm strike in the game, there's this huge hullabaloo, right? There's a big old kerfuffle going on, right? And it's, they're laying down the, the napalm or whatever. That animation and sound it's a ton of low end and the Astro A50s handled it fine on its own. However, when music was playing, it could not keep up. It was just a muddied, muddled mess in the low register 
because it couldn't handle that kick drum at the same time with the like low end from that um you know napalm strike uh the odyssey penrose x crystal clear i could hear the definition between the two without any issues so i thought that was really really cool and it just kind of goes to show you why uh, planar magnetic is just a little bit better than dynamic drivers in this type of situation now of course you guys are going to be like i don't listen to music while playing video games <laughs> you should try it it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome it actually for me anyway it gets me in and i'm just you know smoking fools left and right anyway that was the biggest difference that i could describe as far as comparing the two in a gaming situation now of course in a audio situation where i am going through my audio demo tracks the a50s were decent i mean were they 300 dollars decent i've heard better coming out of some you know 100 dollar iems but the odyssey penrose x were just phenomenal for music all the way around if you guys don't know my demo tracks, I'll leave a link down in the description for both Spotify and Tidal. And you guys can listen to the demo tracks, which I use all the time to, you know, uh, review speakers, review headphones and all that kind of stuff. So check that out. It's like about three hours, 45 minutes or whatever. And the beauty about headphones is I can take these to work and just listen straight on through, you know, for four or five hours without being interrupted, uh, which is awesome. So moving on to connectivity and versatility. Got to give it up to the Odyssey Penrose X. Uh, the A50 is just um, kind of like a one trick pony in the aspect of you have to connect it up with an optical cable, whereas the Penrose X uses a USB dongle. Now, at first, this doesn't seem like any kind of big deal, but after trying multiple times to get this to work, the A50s are just not compatible with the Xbox Series X or the Series S because both of them do not have an optical port. And it's kind of weird because if you go to Amazon or wherever, the A50s say they work with the Xbox Series X. And I tried plugging in, you know, both uh, USBs. Like one says charge on the back of the little charging base and one is just a micro uh, for power i plugged both of those into the usb and nothing was recognized and so to actually review the astro a50s i had to break out the xbox one x because that does have an optical port and that's how i did the review for this headset i mean this is one pretty big deal like if you have an xbox one x and a pair of a50s and you wanted to get a series x you pretty much have to get a new headset so yeah, it's kind of messed up. It's a little bit of a big deal. I don't know why they're saying it's compatible unless I'm missing something. I don't know. But I tried to get these things to work with the Series X and they do not. On the other hand, the Odyssey Penrose X uses a USB dongle. And the beauty of this is that you can actually connect via the USB dongle, meaning the Xbox Series X, and Bluetooth. So I can Bluetooth to my phone and then listen to music on my phone and play the game at the same time. That's pretty cool. Or if you're a streamer and you have Discord and you've got like a live video feed for your Discord or you got an audio feed for your Discord. I don't know how that works. I know people have done something like that. Um, you can listen in on what's happening in your Discord, Bluetooth through the phone into the headset and still have the game audio coming through uh, via the USB dongle. So very very versatile and then when i'm not gaming i can remove the microphone and use the odyssey penrose x as a you know standard bluetooth headphone that has awesome awesome sound quality all right so now let's move on to comfort as a gaming headset you're going to be playing on these four hours and it's got to be comfortable and this is where the astro a50s shine and even though the ear cups are cloth uh, my head did not get hot after about four and a half hours of gaming, and I didn't have pretty much any issues at all with the headset for long periods of time. The Odyssey, that's, yeah, they have a little bit of an issue with the, you know, um, the clamping force. That's one thing I noticed with these headphones is that, man, after like four hours or so, like my jaw started kind of hurting because they're just tight on here. So... Uh, not the most comfortable. I did a lot of this nonsense to kind of loosen them up. And after a couple of months, they are now 
not hurting me at all. So uh, found a way to uh, help out the clamping force issue and my jaw doesn't get like tight um, up here after wearing it for so long, but uh, definitely an issue. I mean, well, you know, I don't know what they can do because it is pretty hard plastic as far as the headband is concerned. So yeah, so clamping force, a little too much for my taste, um, but it's gotten better. However, you know, no need to do any of that stuff with the A50s. Both the Penrose X and the A50s have apps where you can go in and change the EQ and load it onto the headphones. I did not use this because I am listening to music, so I'd rather have everything be flat so that I can hear how everything's coming through. Now you can go in and, you know, accentuate like stuff so you can hear footsteps louder and all that kind of stuff, but I did not. This is how I ran it, this is how I prefer it, so that's what I did. Now the A50s do have support for Dolby Atmos with the Xbox One. In practice, the pseudo Atmos that they're doing with the headphones works, but it's not like having the real thing and you know playing on my home theater system. So um, it's okay. I think it's more of a novelty and just a way for them to sell some more headsets. But uh, if I'm gonna, you know, really want a game and get like a good score, I'm gonna be using my, you know, 27 inch gaming monitor and this headset to do so. Overall, I think the clear winner here is the Odyssey Penrose X due to the superior sound quality and versatility. When I'm done gaming, I can throw these on, Bluetooth it to my phone or tablet, play music and still enjoy my, you know, somewhat expensive investment of $300. The Astro A50s are good, comfortable, long sessions. The only problem is you're only gonna use them when you're gaming. And that's a limitation of the fact that they don't have any Bluetooth and you have to use an optical cable to connect it to sound. So it's not compatible with the Xbox Series X. However, you can use it on Xbox One, Xbox One S, Xbox One X, because they do have optical output ports. The Penrose X are a bit bulky, and yes, I did have some issues with the clamping force. Uh, after the four hour mark, the A50s definitely were more comfortable for longer gaming sessions. For the most part, I'm at like two to three hours on average, if I can find that kind of time. Now, if $300 seems like a lot and you want something more comfortable, definitely check out the SteelSeries Arctis 9X, which are around $200 and are their Xbox Series X option. However, if you're looking for the best sounding gaming headset that you can buy for your Series X, you definitely need to check out the Odyssey Penrose X. Now, if you guys have any questions about this or anything else, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your Techno Dad, and I'll see you next time.